Welcome back to Opinion Journal. I'm Mary Kissel. Detroit is so broke that the now emergency manager of that city, Kevin Orr, is thinking of selling off the town's art collection. Is this a good solution, or is it just an, uh, an art heist under another name? Wall Street Journal Leisure and Arts Editor Eric Gibson joins me now to talk about this. Um, Eric, has a city ever seized an art collection to pay off its debts? No, you, you have to really ask yourself how badly mismanaged the city has been that it has to try to sell off the family jewels. I mean, not even New York City in the depths of the 1970s fiscal crisis was raiding the Metropolitan Museum or the Museum of Modern Art to, to pay its bills. But this is the result of a unique situation in that Detroit is the only city in America that I know of that actually owns the collection of its museum. And it's a big collection. It's, 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 a, an, it's an important collection. It's, it's one of the major museums in the country, yes. So it, would the city be breaking any laws by seizing uh, this art collection, or is this an okay thing to do? Well, it would, in theory, be, be uh, doing what is legal, since it owns the collection, but it would be a violation of the public trust. It would be a, it w a horrendous precedent because the people who donated their Rembrandts and Picassos to the museum over the, over the decades and who've written checks have done so on the assumption that these works would be there in perpetuity. Many times if you leave a painting to a museum it's because you don't trust your family to look after <laughs> it or you don't have any family and the museum is the is the incubator over time and they hold these things in trust for present and future generations. This move is saying no, there, there is no public trust. These things are financial assets and it would be, it would, it would be a serious, serious precedent. So, so Eric, it's different from selling off a, st a statue in a public square just because it's in a museum or because a private individual donated it's, it? Be, be, beca because it's in a museum donated by an individual on the understanding that it, that it will be looked after and held there in perpetuity. Uh, the G statue of the general in the public square has generally been paid for by the government or by public s subscription and is also not likely to be considered a, all that valuable. Okay, but Kevin Orr has to solve the city's fiscal problem, so I isn't this a practical um, solution? Uh, or do you think he would, would realize the full value of this kind of art? Well, that's the other thing, is it's, it's ultimately, if it were to go forward, it would be a self-defeating move on several fronts. One is that to put a great deal of art on the market at once, it automatically drops in value because you're, you know, you're, you're flooding, flooding the you're market. You're flooding the market. Right, exactly. So, um, so they wouldn't, whatever uh, financial sugar plums are dancing <laughs> in his head uh, would be he much smaller. And, and the other thing is that if the city needs money, it needs to keep the museum open because it's a tourist destination which generates tax revenue. So by plundering the museum, they're essentially killing the goose that lays the golden egg. We've got uh, just a, a couple seconds left. There is a move afoot to stop this, yes? Yes, a, a, a bill cleared the state senate committee yesterday uh, incubating or isolating the collection from sale and museum professionals around the country have been lobbying the governor and other officials to to make them understand uh, what a what a mistake this would be. So not a lobby we hear about all the time, museum professionals lobbying uh, state legislatures and governors, but Wall Street Journal Leisure and Arts Editor Eric Gibson, thank you so much for the update. Thank you.